Hi everyone, this is Andy, and today I wanted to bring you a short video that was actually viewer suggested. So, I have been making a series of videos on the Autogen framework, and most of that has centered around integrating Autogen with GPT agents. So as I'm sure you know, one of the interesting things that Autogen can do is to actually set up group chats between any number of agents. So today, we're going to take a quick look at how you can do that in your own projects. So just like we've done in previous videos, let's hit Command Shift P, open up a new terminal window, and I am going to create a Conda environment for our project. Conda create autogen yt python 3.11.3. It will ask me if I want to proceed. I will say yes. Once this is done installing, I will go ahead and activate that environment. And then I'm going to confirm where on disk this environment installed its version of Python. Once I know that location, I'm going to use that exact version to install PyAutoGen. Now you notice this time, I'm not saying PyAutoGen equals equals any particular version. That's because, as I covered in my last video, uh, PyAutoGen version 2 has been released, and it has all of the GPT-related features that we've been talking about in previous videos. So I'm just going to install PyAutoGen itself. I'm going to hit Enter and let that run. And as you can see right here, PyAutoGen 0.2.0, the new version, has been installed. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make my OAI underscore config underscore list file where I'm going to put all of the API keys that I'm going to use for this project. I'm going to pop that on in there. And just like we've talked about previously, before I publish this video, I will revoke this key. So we can go ahead and close this. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new file for our project. I will call that group.py. And I have some code ready to go, which I will paste in, save that. And just as in the past, if we scroll up, we notice that autogen is not being recognized. And that's because even though in the terminal we have our autogen conda environment active, if you look at the lower right hand corner of the screen, it doesn't look like Visual Studio Code is using that environment currently. It's using my base conda environment, which is not where we installed PyAutogen. So I'm going to click on this, it will pop open a list, and here I see my new conda environment that we just made. If yours does not show up, click on this refresh button. So I'm going to select my Autogen YT environment. And now you see that the text is now green, the yellow underlines are gone, Visual Studio Code recognizes this library now, and we're good to go. So let's go through this code. The first thing that you might notice here, I'm actually loading a different model than I've used in the past. I'm loading GPT 3.5 Turbo, the 1106 preview. And the reason that I'm doing that is essentially just to keep my API cost lower than it would be if I was using for example, GPT-4 Turbo, or the more costly GPT-4. And I have an anecdote about that that I'll tell you in a minute. So the next thing that I'm doing is I'm making a quote-unquote less costly LLM config using GPT-3.5 Turbo. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to set up a very basic group chat between a couple of different GPT agents, and I'm going to structure it in the form of a debate. So I'm going to have a moderator, and I'm going to have one assistant representing one side of the debate, and another assistant representing the opposite side. So I'm going to start by setting up a user proxy. And the user proxy will be named user proxy. And I'm going to give it the less costly LLM config. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because if we go and look at the definition of user proxy, user proxy itself is a conversable agent, which means that it can use a large language model to generate automatic responses whenever it receives input, just like our other agents. I'm going to give it a system message. You are the conversation initiator and moderator etc, etc. 
directive, facilitate a smooth and engaging conversation between Sam and Bob. The next thing I'm going to do is give it a default auto reply. So if all else fails, it will at the very least say this. I'm going to give it the human input mode and I'm going to say max consecutive auto reply five. Next, I'm going to construct the actual debate agents. So here we see an agent called Sam. It's a GPT assistant. I'm giving it the name Sam. I'm giving it the LLM config, and I'm giving it instructions. You are Sam. You are optimistic, forward thinking, tech savvy, etc. Now I'm going to construct a GPT assistant agent named Bob. I'm going to give it the less costly LLM config as well, and some instructions. You are Bob, you are cautious, thoughtful, critically minded, etc., etc. Now the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to set up another LLM config. I'm going to make this one use GPT-4 1106 preview, and I'm going to give this to an LLM config that I will call costly LLM. The reason for that is pretty simple. The GPT-4, even GPT-4 Turbo, is going to cost a little bit more than previous models like GPT-3.5 or 3.5 Turbo. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a group chat object. This group chat object takes an array of agents. The agents I'm providing are user proxy, Sam, and Bob. I'm not preloading this with any messages and I'm giving it a max round. Now, the max round is a way to limit how far the automated conversation will go. So for instance, if I was to set this to 10, then there would be 10 messages back and forth. The messages from user proxy, Sam and Bob, all count towards this total. So make sure to set this appropriately. And this is probably going to take some experimentation on your part to find exactly what you need to set this to, depending on your particular use case. So we're just going to set it to five because we don't really need to go too deeply into anything. And then I am going to construct a group chat manager, and I am going to give the group chat object to the group chat manager. And notice the costly LLM config that I just made up here, I'm going to give that to the group chat manager. And the reason for that, if we look at group chat manager's definition, we see that group chat manager is itself also a conversable agent. So what does that mean? I'm giving the group chat manager the most capable GPT model that is currently available publicly. And I'm doing that so that it can intelligently decide how to manage the conversation, which agent responds when and who goes next. Sometimes agents repeat themselves, sometimes they don't. And the group chat manager is the agent that is responsible for managing that interaction. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to say user proxy, initiate chat, and I am going to provide that group chat manager object as an argument for initiate chat. Then I'm going to give it a message. Welcome, Sam and Bob. Today's discussion topic is the role of virtual reality in future education systems, et cetera, et cetera. And just as in the past, when this conversation is done, I am going to say, Sam, delete assistant, Bob, delete assistant. And this will clean these agents out of my OpenAI account. Now you don't have to do this, but understand that if you don't do this, then Sam and Bob are going to persist in your OpenAI account. And when you open your list of assistant agents, you will see them there. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to leave these lines here. So let's run this project and see what happens. Now this is going to take a few moments, so I'm going to go ahead and cut to the end, and then I will take you through what happened. All right, so it looks like our chat is done. The program has exited. So let's go back and look and see what happened. So here we see assistant Sam does not exist, creating new assistant. Assistant Bob does not exist, creating new assistant. And here the user proxy says to the chat manager, welcome Sam and Bob. Today's discussion topic is the role of virtual reality in future education systems, et cetera, et cetera. The next thing that happens, Sam says to the chat manager, 
Thank you for the warm welcome. Here is my argument. And then Bob chimes in, says to the chat manager, while Sam has highlighted some important benefits, here is my argument. Then the user proxy chimes in and says, both of you have provided insightful perspectives, etc., etc., etc. Then the conversation is handed back to Sam, and it says to the chat manager, here is some more argumentation. And then the program abruptly ends. Now, why did it do that? Well, if we go and look at our group chat object, remember we said max round equals five, and messages from Sam, Bob, and user proxy all count towards this quota of five messages. So let's see, we have one message from Sam, one message from user proxy, so that's two messages so far, one from Bob, so we're at three messages, one from Sam, so that's four messages, and the initial user proxy kickoff, which was the fifth message, and that is max round five. So once we hit five messages, this is going to automatically end. And again, the reason for that is to help you avoid a situation where your agent conversation goes off the rails and starts using lots of API calls. I mentioned at the beginning that there was gonna be an anecdote that would come up somewhere in this discussion. And so last week, I actually did an experiment where I set up, I think it was 25 GPT assistants, which is a lot. And I gave each one of them their own system message that told it to have some sort of specialization or another. And I also put them all into a group chat with a max round of, I think it was 35 or 40. So that's a lot of API activity. And after running this project several times throughout the day, I went and I looked at my API usage and I had ended up spending a little bit over $20 just in API calls, which is a lot. So a word of warning, be careful about what you do with the max round parameter for your group chat. And also be mindful of what GPT model you're actually using. In this case, for the group chat manager itself, it's a good idea to use the most capable model that you have access to, again, so that it can intelligently manage the conversation. And in the case of your GPT assistant agents themselves, it depends on your use case. If you can get away with using a less costly model, I say do that because that's gonna save you money in the long run. So there you have it. That is how to use GPT assistance in a group chat situation. Thank you to Ben Williams for suggesting this video. If anybody has anything else that they would like to see, let me know in the comments below. Have fun with this. Let me know if you come up with anything cool and I will talk to you next time.